wake up, my friends. Sister White says, it will be what? Declared. That men are offending God by the violation of the what? Sunday Sabbath. That this sin has brought calamities which will not cease until what? Sunday observe and shall be strictly enforced. Red words. They will lament what? The great wickedness in the world. And second, the testimony of whom? Religious teachers. That the degraded state of morals is caused by what? The desecration of Sunday. They will link immorality with the calamities. One is the cause, the other is the result. That's why we need Sunday. Guess who is saying this? This woman, her name is Ann Coulter. Is she influential? Yes. Ann Coulter says, Hurricane Harvey, the storm, is more likely, what now? God's punishment for Houston's lesbian mayor than a result of what? Climate change. What you're seeing here, it does not matter what angle, it goes back to Sunday. If it's climate change, to combat climate change and for Sunday. If it's immorality, it's the same solution. Get back to God, honor Sunday. Do you see it? This pastor I heard was fired because he made this statement. Kevin Swanson states, September 1st, 2017, Hurricane Harvey is what now? Is God's judgment on Houston for having a very aggressively pro homosexual mayor, LGBT. Now, when these folks make that statement, it carries weight, but not as much weight as when the Pope says it. Look at this. September 1st, 2017. What is the headline there, ABC News? Pope Francis and Mr. Bartholomew blame what? They blame moral decay for ecology crisis. So what did the Pope say is the cause for Hurricane Harvey? What did he say? Moral decay. Does he carry weight? Does he have clout? Skip on down. Skip on down. Take the first line. Red words. They blamed the what? They blamed the current state of what? Degradation on moral decay. Did Sister what not just say that? Go back there. GC 590. Bottom paragraph. What it says. Come on. They, come on. They will lament the great wickedness in the world and second the testimony of whom? religious teacher that what now that the degraded state of morals the very words of GC great controversy let's go back again they blame what the current degradation degrade degradation is a Sunday law near my friends and then you know what Greg Abbott from Texas signed into law on Friday. That Sunday, tomorrow Sunday, September 3rd, it's a day of prayer to combat calamities and pray for those who have been terribly affected by Hurricane Harvey, Irma, and the after effects. Now, before I drop it, hear me now, friends. Hear me now. It's natural for Christians to pray for the oppressed, the unfortunate, those who have gone through crises. We don't need a governor to force, to enforce, to enact, to legislate a day of prayer. For Christians, Daniel chapter 3. 
It's coming. It's coming. Because if you are a Christian, naturally you pray. It's at our doorsteps. Jesus is about to stand up. Is Satan under your feet? Or is he ruling your mind? That's the question. It's coming. Notice now. Notice. Notice. They are now launching a day. One day. Sunday. Why Sunday? Why not Monday? Why Sunday? And this is just once for now. What if it was a law every Sunday of every year from this point forward? Do you know that would have been the Sunday law? Just imagine while people are watching sports, shopping, biting, gossiping, carousing, partying. Eating and drinking, getting drunk. The son the law could have been passed. While seventh day Adventist pastors are playing games in the pulpit. That could have been the son the law. But oh, says some preachers, don't talk about current events. Just preach the love of Jesus. It's love to tell you danger is coming. Get ready. This is what Matthew 25 is all about. At the voice of midnight, a voice was heard. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. For him to come, he must get up. Go you out to meet him. And all ten virgins were now awakened. Would you have been found today, September 2nd, even those online saved to serve in international, would you have been found with lamps and oil? Would you have been found with lamps and oil? A wise virgin. Or would you have been found as a foolish virgin? That means today, maybe there would have been no need for a baptism. If the Sunday law was passed yesterday, it's a possibility. No need for a baptism today. How many would have come now knocking on our church door? Open up. Let me have Pastor Andrew's phone number. I want to get baptized. I now want Bible studies. How many would have grabbed their computers now? Let me log on to save to serve. Now I want the sermons. Now I want to listen. Young people would have now been awakened. Lord have mercy. He's here. All the ones awakened. The drunkards sober. Sober. Now they're sober. Now they're running from east to north. Seeking God's word. Too late. Then the fear virgins. Amos 8. Verse 11. Verse 12. Verse 12. Verse 13, the fear of virgins with the lack. What would you now say to your pastor? Early writings, page 282. I saw a company, she says, suffering from the bitter effects of the plagues. Parents were bitterly reproaching their children. Children, their parents. Brothers, their sisters. Sisters, their brothers. Loud wailing cries were heard from every direction. What was heard? It was you who kept me from receiving the truth which would have saved me from this awful hour. Sister White says, the people then turn upon their ministers with bitter hate and reproach them saying, you did not warn us. You told us all the world will be converted. You cried peace, peace to quiet our fears. And those who warned us of this crisis, you declared them to be evil men, fanatics who would ruin us. I saw, Sister White says, the ministers did not escape the wrath of God. 
their judgment was tenfold greater than that of the people. The blind and the blind sheep both lost. Early writings. 282. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Am I ready, my friends? Are you ready? In the book, that same book, early writings, page 37, Sister White says, I saw a company howling in agony who had the words written on their garments in large characters. Thou art weighed in the balance and are for warning. She asks, who this company is? Her angel said, these are they who have once kept the Sabbath, but have given it up. She heard them began to weep in agony. We believe in thy coming and taught it with energy. And as they looked upon their garments and saw the words, they wailed aloud. Then Sister White says, I saw that they have drunk of the deep waters, fouled the residue with their feet, trodden upon the Sabbath, and this is why they have been weighed in the balance and are found wanting. These are people who were once Sabbath keepers gave it up. Is that me? Would that be you? These were ones who taught the second coming of Christ with energy. Is that me? Would that be you? Lost, my friends. Lost. Lost. Look. Past that. Here it is. August 31st, Governor Abbott, what now my friends? Declares, preacher, declares a day of prayer in where? Texas. We'll pray as what? Here it is. As a result of that, I think it's very important that I issue and sign a Texas gubernatorial proclamation here today by the power invested in me as governor of the state of Texas. I am declaring this Sunday, September 3rd, as a day of prayer in Texas. This is a day where we will pray for all those who are affected. We will pray for the first responders, for those who have volunteered to help others. We will pray regardless of what faith or church. Or it's past that. And there it is, my friends. When tomorrow, September 3rd, and again, why do we need a governor to tell us when to pray? In the context of calamities. Is that son the law coming, my friends? Watch. And then, let me pass that. Let me pass that. There's so much, so much. Then once the governor in Texas did that, a few hours, here comes Donald J. Trump. And the picture says a thousand words. Prophecy is being fulfilled. He did this under the instigation of Protestants, evangelicals. We must have you proclaim a day of prayer in the context of calamities. There it is, my friend. Sunday, a day of what? Prayer. Watch this. Watch carefully. There it is. God is our what? Headline. God is what? God is our refuge and strength. Trump declares what, my friends? A national what? Day of prayer on what day? Sunday. This could have simply read, God is our refuge. God is our strength. President Trump declares a, a national Sunday Forcing all to worship on Sunday. And when the Sunday law is enforced at first, it doesn't come with teeth. Like a baby. A baby is not born with teeth right away. But a few days after, that law 
all of a sudden, we'll grow teeth. We'll grow teeth. So when, when that law is passed, you won't have somebody dragging you to the guillotine. No, you won't have somebody hanging uh, you know, a sword over your head. But a few days after, as the calamities increase, increase, now they're going to say, you know what? Who is not keeping Sunday? Those people? Then we are signing into law. You have to give up Sabbath and keep Sunday. Then it's your test. Do you see how close we are, my friend? What if we had Hurricane Harvey in Texas? We had the massive earthquake on the West Coast. Washington, Oregon, um, California. Destroying the West Coast. Huh? Tornadoes in the central states. At the same time. Hurricane wiping out the Northeast Corridor. Snowstorms. Northeast. All at the same time. You think they will call for a one day Sunday prayer? <laughs> oh, my friends. Oh. Afraid from this great crisis. And behind me, we have faith based people, people who are highly respected, and especially so in their communities where they're not only respected, but they're loved. Evangelical leaders, Christian leaders, many people of faith. And I just want to thank you all for being with us today because we're going to be signing a day of prayer, and that'll be on Sunday. It'll be a very special day, and I don't know when this was done last, but it's been a long time ago. Is that a correct statement? It's been a long time ago. So I'm going to sign it, and then a few of the folks will say a few words and Pastor Jeffress will say a prayer for not only the people so affected, so horribly affected by Hurricane Harvey, but for the people of our nation and in fact the people of our world. Okay. And he signed it. A few years ago, I have been preaching that these leaders are going to say we must turn this nation back to God to preserve the nation. And one of the prayers that was prayed had the exact words. Watch. Okay, Trump. Okay. Look at this. Listen. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. Listen. Mr. Shelley, what are you? <laughs> Since when are you shutting? I'm, I'm not shy, Mr. President. Mr. President, I, this is a great moment. Uh, the country has a lot of challenges. You know that as president. Uh, to ask the country to turn back to God, to pray, is, is just an incredible thing for a president to do. I guess George Washington was the first one to do it. A lot of Americans may have forgotten that the country was built on a moral idea in the second paragraph of the Declaration of Independence. I know you know it. We as evangelicals have now influence with the president to get him to proclaim a religious law to turn the nation weird back to God. Do you know how long I've been preaching that? And now, verbatim, the words are being used. This could have been that son of the law, my friend. Was I ready? Were you ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? And then the very prayer that was prayed came from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And I thank you. Thank you for confirming it. And this past Tuesday, I told you a prayer meeting. They are going to be the son the law of what? Second Chronicles 7 verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, humble themselves, pray, turn from their wicked ways, and seek my face, then I will hear from heaven. I will 
forgive their sin. I will heal their land. Look, the very same prayer was prayed. Here comes Jefferson. Watch. Listen. Jefferson. Let's pray together, may we? Yes. Father, your word says, if your people who are called by your name will humble themselves and pray and seek your face, you will forgive their sins and heal their land. Can you see it, my friends? The thing's right at our doorstep. Put down the statement. I can't quote it. GC 605. GC 605. Sister White says, for years, God's messengers have been preaching a son the law is coming. And many have said in response, you are a mere alarmist. But then she says, as they, as they begin to see events showing a Sunday law is near, the message that was once doubted is now believed. And the third angel's message will produce an effect it never had. The signs are here, my friends. Father, are we ready? Children, the rest of us. I'm wondering what the nominal SDA churches, pastors, preach today. Go call your siblings. Go call them. What did the pastor preach about? What was taught in Sabbath school today? Today, September 2nd. And you come back and tell me, all right? I want to see you. You come back and you tell me. We're in trouble. Lastly, do you know why that's stunning? Watch carefully. Watch carefully. It was the Pope who first insinuated the thought. We must have leaders legalizing or enacting a day of prayer. The beast said it first, then the image did it. Here it is, my friends. This is August when? 31st, 2017. Headline says what? Vatican Radio. Mr. Pope, prayers for what? Harvey victims. Skip on down. Mr. Francis has sent a message to Cardinal Daniel DiNardo. Who is he? Archbishop of where? Galveston, Houston, and president of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, expressing his condolences to whom? The loved ones of the victims of Hurricane Harvey, promising continued spiritual solicitude for all those affected. Watch now, and asking for what now? The prayerful solidarity. Here it is, my friend. That has already been shown to continue in the days and weeks to come. And as the beast spoke that, then came whom? The image. Now, watch this. This is going to blow your mind for the good. Startle you. Awaken you. How was it accidental? Incidental. For in one week... There was a great sign in the sun, in the moon, and the sea and waves roaring in the same week. August 21st, the great American eclipse, solar eclipse, sun in the sun, sun in the moon. And by Friday, August 25th, Hurricane Harvey, sea and waves roaring in the same week, Luke 21, 25 to 28, the end is here. Watch now. It's very good timing for Harvey to come when it came. Because what is September 1st? No. September 1st is the national, the international day of prayer for creation. That's September 1st. So now Harvey was right on time. Somebody, somebody must have planned that. So to create a Harvey and the after effect and a few days after September 1st, the international day of prayer for the earth to combat calamities. 
It was on time. Somebody is calling the shots. You can't wake up, my friends. Look at the big picture. Watch. Here it is, my friends. August 30th, 2017. I close right here. The Pope asked what? August 30th now. Before Trump and Abbott. August 30th. The Pope asked world leaders to listen to the cry of the earth. Do you speak the earth language? You must be an earth worshiper, Mr. Pope. Watch this. Mr. Francis is urging whom? World leaders to listen to the cry of what two things? Come on now. The earth and what? The cry of the poor. And take measures. What are those measures? To preserve the earth and the poor. I'll come there. It's Sunday. Watch. Red words. In 2015, Mr. Francis did what now? The Pope designated September 1st as what? Day for what, my friends? Prayer for what? The environment framing care for what? The planet as a moral issue. And the Orthodox Christians also say September 1st, the international day to pray for the earth, to combat calamities. Harvey was on time. It's not incidental, not accidental, on time. So my friends, if they are so in sync with their agenda, we must be in sync with God's agenda. Amen. Jesus is about to stand up. Is Satan under our feet, my friends? What must we do to protect earth? What must we do to care for the poor? Sunday. My friends. So do you now ask the question? Are you now convicted? Who sees that we're near for a Sunday law, my friends? Do you see it? Even those online... Who sees, my friends, probation can close at any time. Death can come at any time. I'm convicted. How about you? So what's the question? Men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do? That's the question now. Men and brethren, what shall we do? What is hindering you from getting ready? Is a person hindering you from getting ready? You better ask God to move that person out of your way. What is hindering you from getting ready? Physically, mentally, spiritually. You better beg God for power to move that thing out the way.